water, earth, fire, air. Long ago, a TV show amazed millions. Then, everything changed when I found out my friends hadn't seen it. Only Netflix, master of all forms of streaming, could help them. And when we needed it most, it added all three seasons. Not even 100 seconds passed before I convinced my friends to start it. And although their binge-watching skills are great, they have a lot to go before they've completed the entire show. But I believe that they are going to love it. And the theme music. And here we are. Here we are in the future. So we're going to we're 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 going to do that whole intro every episode. <laughs> eh, why yeah. not? I love it. <laughs> I think it's great. All right. Jaron, do the thing before we forget. Stay All right, long, gosh, I'm, Hank, are we? I'm Daniel Hudson. I'm Nora Jones. I'm Bill Jackson. That's not your name. Glad to have you on the show, Bill. Yeah, yeah, it's an honor. This is my first appearance. You know, maybe we should make it a goal You that Daniel does the intro and immediately after, Jaring goes, who the gosh darn heck are we? That only came about during yours and Olivia's first episode. Because we had new people. It was our first episode with guests and we had to establish and order. You had never spoken to Daniel uh, until five minutes before we started recording. Mm. Olivia and Daniel already knew each other from uh, that film. I have film. met Daniel, though. Yes, you did, at the, the cast party. Yeah. Did yeah. we talk, Daniel? I don't think we did. Unless I... we were shouting things in each other's vague direction during volleyball. Probably. We were all playing very volleyball aggressive. at one time. I'm a very aggressive sports person. <laughs> So I probably did shout something at you. <laughs> well, this is uh this is a podcast where I'm making these two watch Avatar the Last Airbender for the first time. Yeah. Indeed. I ate a lot of cookies at cast party. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, is they were good cookies. Yeah, or maybe they were cupcakes. I don't remember. I ate a lot of something. Whatever it was, it was nice. I, I don't remember that cast party very well. Brownies. That's what it was. Brownies. I yep. think there exists a photo of me and Olivia there. And I think you and, like, Emily are in the frame, too. I, I don't remember. It was a karaoke party, too. Daniel sang Weird Al. Not unlike the Shrek in the Swamp karaoke dance party featured on the Shrek 1 DVD. Mm, I sang I Dreamed a Dream. Very befitting of where the future went. I know. I'm not talking about us doing Les Mis. I'm talking about the world completely falling apart and we're in quite possibly purgatory right now. Wow, I did not think of it as that dark, but that's also (laughs) true. I mean, we are in in quite the purgatory. We are in the bad timeline. And then... This is the bad place. (gasps) That's another okay, that's show not... you need to get me to watch. I love The Good Place. Oh, I watched it with okay, an old Nora? friend a long time ago. The first episode. Nora, just please, whatever you do, don't talk about season four of The Good Place yet. Uh, I'm waiting to watch it. Oh, you need to watch it. It's so I know good. I do. It's so good. Oh my goodness. I need to watch it like you guys need to watch Avatar, Last Airbender. Hey, look at that. Well, I, I'm trying to. You are trying very hard. I know. Now, we but... keep stopping you every three episodes. Indeed. You do. you do. At least we didn't cut off the two-parter. <sighs> that would have been a little bit of, well, hmm, that could have worked. I, I would have broken the rules and watched the second half. I'm sorry. <laughs> Young lady. Fair enough. So how do we how do we want to discuss the two part or should I just treat it as one big episode? Treat them as separate episodes. Separate episodes. Okay. So our first episode, um, book one, episode or chapter <laughs> seven. This is Winter Solstice Part One, and uh, 
kind of an important episode for the series. We established things like the spirit world and big old spirit monsters. Yummy. Yeah. So in this episode, Ang, Katara, Saka, Appa, and Momo. Um, the Ang gang. The Ang gang. They be flying through the air, and they notice uh, a destroyed patch of forest that firebenders uh, roughed up. Ang is rather sad and dejected until Katara assures him that the forest will regrow. And they are accosted by an old man from a nearby town who has been having problems only the Avatar can solve. Turns out a spirit has been attacking the town and taking a person every night. Aang decides that he will figure out how to solve it as the bridge between the two worlds, Mr. Avatar Man. Uh, He does a rather poor job of it. Uh, Buildings get smashed and Sokka gets kidnapped into the spirit world. Aang finds himself kind of there, kind of not in this sort of limbo state. While it's in the kind state. of a, uh, a Christmas Carol situation. He can ah. see them, but they can't see him. <laughs> that's or a any very... ghost situation. Yeah, that's a very weird comparison. <laughs> for, like, um... hey, here's the ghost of Christmas. You know what I meant. <laughs> I know. Well, the ghost of Christmas Pass, uh, a dragon shows up. Hey, it takes place during the winter solstice, so... But, Close I mean... enough, right? <laughs> Yeah, we knew exactly what you meant. Aang is just like Scrooge. Mm, quit making fun of me. <laughs> okay. Uh, a dragon shows up and takes Aang over to a place called the Crescent Isles, where um, his past life avatar Roku wants to speak with him in a couple of days. But Aang uh, was hoping to get some more info about the spirit world in general to help save Sokka. But he realizes why the spirit is upset in the end. Because uh, the forest was destroyed, and he assures the spirit it will be okay in the future. Meanwhile, Uncle Iroh is just chilling in a hot tub when some rude AF earthbenders just cause a landslide and take him prisoner. Uh, Prince Zuko has to go save him. Uh, there's, there's a little moment where he almost decides to go after the Avatar instead. But he steps in to save his uncle from getting his hands crushed, and they kick butt together. That was one of my favorite parts of the whole episode. Yeah. Uh, Tubby Iroh just being a badass. This is still part one, right? This is all part one. Okay. So, yeah. All right, guys, what do you think about uh, the spirit stuff? Fascinating. I really like the uh, the the hay, hay by, is that what it's called? Yeah. It, do they incorporate the spirit realm as continuously as they do in these two parts, like throughout the series? Because I like it a lot. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. It gets kind of dropped after the no. <laughs> oh. They, we see more spirit stuff. Like I mean, I assume we do, but like. I was just wondering, I guess I worded it wrong. I don't know. I like the fact that the spirit world kind of aids him in his journey instead of it kind of being there. Because we're not really in that part in this episode yet, but in the second part. I'm having a really hard time forming words right now. (laughs) Just keep talking. Someone else go. (laughs) Um. Um, spirits are quite a big deal, um, for the series going forward. It's good they established that stuff early on. I can't remember if it was mentioned specifically in episodes prior. I don't think so. I mean, Probably not. I, I'm, I don't think. I kind of assumed that a spirit element would be there just because when you go to the temple with Aang and it's all the past lives and he's connected to them whenever he reaches his avatar state, like his eyes glowing or whatever is happening there. Cause we haven't fully established that yet. So that kind of was like, yeah, there's going to be spirit stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I mean, it's pulling from a lot of the show in general is pulling from a lot of Eastern mysticism. So yeah, 
Spirit showing up isn't completely out of the blue. I guess if you're going into the show and you know like nothing about it, you have no expectations for spiritual stuff, this episode might be just like a a what the heck moment. <laughs> yeah. Hey, why not? It pulls from enough of mythology I was and religion. Of... And... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. I'm no, you keep going. You're in the middle of a thought. Go ahead. It pulls from enough of mythology, religion, customs, traditions, that it would be bizarre not to incorporate it, particularly as you know, the, the setting owes itself very well to, to those things but i was wondering i don't know who said it like a minute ago that if you came in out of the blue seeing this you might be confused how did y'all watch this show growing up if you like missed an episode or just kind of tuned uh, in that so, would be confusing uh, the original broadcast had these little last time on avatar the last airbender things that would give you the most relevant plot points for the okay. episode you were about to watch. Well, okay. That well, that works. How nice of them. Yeah, it it was kind of vital, uh, especially as a kid, where uh, I wasn't always able to watch the episodes as they came out or in order. It was like one, one day they'd just be showing um, like the waterbending scroll episode. And then the next day, it's like, oh, back-to-back -back stuff from book two. Cool. Well, what I, happened? Yeah. I was just wondering that because... Well, I mean, Steven Universe and Gravity Falls That's what and other... I was about to say. I was about to say that, because um, I had Steven Universe for a long time, but I was never really as into it until, like, the last season when I could watch all of it. Like, because I had Hulu, and so I could actually watch the show in order and understand what was going on. So I was wondering how y'all were so into it, since you were younger, and there weren't as many streaming options for shows like that available. There were basically no streaming options. Like, this was m early, mid-2000s. Yeah, I was just trying to be nice. Like, this is back when YouTube wouldn't let you upload things longer than 15 minutes at a time. Hmm. I was just trying to wow, make... Wow, I feel old. Feel See, I was just trying to avoid Jaren feeling old. <laughs> You're so polite to Jaren. Because <laughs> he's not old, but he feels like a little old man sometimes. Speaking of little old man, um, Uncle Iroh was great in this one. Mm -mm. Uncle Iroh was uh, MVP of this episode, in my opinion. Well, the stuff about him being a general, that we find out, and laying siege to Bossing say, yeah, really, really like that. Siege. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the first episode that overtly alludes to uh, the fact that this guy has a history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he probably shouldn't... Uh, uh, underestimate him see this whole time i've been thinking he does these like silly things like the patient stuff as a test for zuko but then there's moments where you're like oh no he's he's actually just serious about being lazy and then <laughs> other times he's strategic about it so i don't know how to feel i haven't decided if he's a genius or he's just lazy and sometimes <laughs> smart. I think he's like Yoda. Okay. Because that's what I thought the first time I saw him. Because he was saying you should sit and wait. And I was like, oh, he's trying to teach him a lesson. But no, he just wanted to play like his game. And he just was vibing the whole time. He was like, oh, that's unfortunate. You got beat up. Like, <laughs> Zuko. I was like, okay. <laughs> well, Yoda in The Empire Strikes Back, when Luke first meets him, he's a, he's a bit of a prankster. He's intentionally trying to throw Luke off and deceive him into being surprised that this great Jedi is this weird little goblin he ran across. Okay. I think well, Iroh is very powerful and very wise and sometimes likes to 
mess around with people. Though I do think he's also a bit lazy and likes to hang around, and I don't blame him. If I if I went to a place with like hot springs, I would totally get my relaxation on. Well, I mean, they're just regular springs, and he can heat them up with his nose steam. Yeah. Correct. Okay, well, I'm just going to assume he's Yoda until proven otherwise. <laughs> okay. He, he gets... He gets moments like that, I would say, yeah. And also, um, one important detail, uh, he notices something from the spirit world. Yeah. Oh, yeah, what was up with that? Why can the fire people see the spirit? Because Zuko sees it, too. Uh, he doesn't, actually. But he saw Aang flying on the dragon, and he that's the... No, he of- saw Appa. Oh. Zuko saw Appa, and he was like, oh, that must be where the Avatar is. The I'm only one who saw the dragon was Iro. I'm just kidding. I mean, I was just trying to keep you on your toes. Make sure you're paying attention, obviously. Ha ha. Ha ha. It's a good trick, you. Thank you. I I am so smart. Big brain time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so could be could be the show wanted you guys to uh, to draw a little connection between Iro and the Spirit World. Yeah, is there something there, I wonder? Is Iro dead? Oh my gosh, it's the sixth no. sense. It's probably not a sixth sense. This is the sixth sense. Oh my gosh. The oh, the Daniel, sixth. you know what I'm about to say. There's a sense. bit of Red irony Zuko. in that being Iris referenced in the context of Avatar. <laughs> oh. Um, I just want to say Unbreakable is a really good movie. <laughs> I really like that film. Unbreakable. They're alive. Not that. Not that. A miracle. Unbreakable. They're alive. Uh, wrong. Un- David Dunn. Damn it. Because females are strong as heck. Heck. PG podcast, people. Yeah, don't fucking swear. Uh- <laughs> Dang. Dang. Sorry. Dang. No swearing on this Christian Minecraft server. <laughs> anyway, um, back to whatever we were saying. Yeah, I don't remember now. Now I can, all I can think about is Kimmy Schmidt. Well, uh, just a few other uh, things from the episode, I guess. Uh, I love that the high bay is just a big old panda. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's, Pandas it's another... are so cute. It's another yeah, it was... just uh, running theme in the show is nature and the corruption of spirits being connected and such. That's a mood. I wish there were large pandas just running around the whole time throughout the series. That would be adorable. That'd be great, yeah. Panda is my favorite character on uh, We Bear Bears. So. Aww. Of course he is. Ice Bears, but... Bob. That's a great show. Yes. I love that show. We bear bears. Oh, we were talking about the sixth sense. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Iro's alive. Just, just rip that band-aid off right now. This is not a sixth sense. <laughs> That's what you're trying to say because you don't want me to spoil it for myself. If if I wanted to avoid spoilers, I just wouldn't say anything. That's yeah, fair. That's like the big series spoiler. You just don't want... You're just trying to lead me astray. In our first episode, I had said that Iroh had big I'm going to die vibes. What if he's already dead? Exactly. Exactly! Tiny M. Night Shyamalan pops onto the screen. What a twist! <laughs> that's the thing, though. Hey, wait a minute. If M. Night Shyamalan directed the live-action adaptation, which exists for some reason, what would be the big twist? Are we going to get to that soon? Hmm. What? M. Night Shyamalan is a... He directed The Sixth Sense. He's known for his big plot twists in all his films. He directed the live-action adaptation of The Last Airbender. Oh. Which is why Daniel and I were saying it was ironic that The Sixth Sense came up in the text. 
See, I did not follow that. My bad. That's all right. How how long did the movie cover? Uh, So the movie, gosh, it... Uh, I don't know if I want to really like go deep into this now or later, but the movie was basically season one. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. I thought the movie was a continuation of the series with a story that you wouldn't have to watch the series to understand. It's just the TV series put in a movie? No, yeah, yeah it's an adaptation. It's a remake. That is a terrible idea. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And That's really bad. It is. Like a lot of really bad decisions were made. Like, the movie's only 100 minutes long. Bad. But but it's trying to condense 20 episodes of television. Like, you couldn't even go to two hours. How do you even... They could have done a freaking Harry Potter on that bad boy. Doing a movie... Or a trilogy. And make a continuation of movies. If I really think not- once we finish the show, we need to watch it and discuss it. Oof. I don't want to do that. (laughs) Or, for shot of film, do it as the so bad's good category. No, Uh, there's better films for that. Rip, you haven't seen it. (laughs) Yeah, but that sounds like it's so bad it's painful. I want it so bad that it's laughable, at least. I mean, honestly, with enough time and distance, it'll probably be laughable now for me, but you guys will just hate it after just experiencing the show. Do you want to hear something? Do you want to know something? Yeah. But I've actually seen a little bit of the movie years and years ago. And I remember it being garbage, but I don't remember much else. <laughs> actually? Wait, did they ever play it on Nickelodeon? Like, would, did they ever play the movie on Nickelodeon? Maybe, I don't know. Because I remember thinking, um, last, I forgot the name of what we're doing. Avatar The Last Airbender? That's it, right? Right? Yeah. Okay, good. I remember thinking it was a like a TV show with people for a long time because I knew I saw the ads for the movie, but I never watched the TV series. So maybe I did see part of the movie. Who knows? Who knows? You know, to let us know if anything uh, in the future is familiar. It certainly wouldn't be from these episodes, though. Um, just from what I remember, of the movie uh, neither of the two-parter or. Maybe a little bit of the waterbending scroll was adapted, but not much. Oh, also slightly... Wait, the second... Oh, sorry, go ahead. The second part establishes, like, the big, I'm guessing, the series arc. How would they not... They just didn't. Oh, no. I don't want to watch this film at all. (laughs) That is the correct response, Nora. I don't anyway. want to watch it. Please don't make me watch it. <laughs> Since Sharon brought it up, why don't we talk about part two, unless you guys have... Oh, I have a comment, but it's kind of irrelevant, but it's about the show, but it's, like, in general. I have officially decided that, although I also think they might be the coolest, the waterbenders are the weakest. Like, by far, I'm sorry. Like, you have to be near an ocean to fight, or get a freaking puddle and it's sad i'm sorry it's sad i said it that's all well apparently in the movie the firebenders have to be near fire to fight yeah in the movie the firebenders are the weakest like well we've already decided that the movie's invalid so thank you yeah i mean it's not canon to the show obviously yeah why would they even feel the need to (laughs) money jared money I mean, yeah, but, but the thing why is, else do you think? Why, why else do you think they're they making a live-action Disney's Robin Hood with the fox? Because cats that, did so they? well. Oh no! They're not doing that, are they? Yeah, yeah they are. No, they're not. No, they're yes, not. Yes, they are. I'm not pulling no, your leg. Not. It's happening. You're lying right now. Nope. Folks, you you heard it here first. Nora's reaction to the worst possible news. <laughs> um, I'm upset, and I'm no, Let's they're not. Let's talk about something good then. Uh, Saka was better in this episode than he was. He really in, was. He was. He's, he's really starting to grow on me as like the comic relief. Yeah. I really liked that he wanted to go out there and help Aang, even though everybody else was against it. Though 
He, his yeah, met- he helped try to fight the uh, the dragon. Well, the high. I, w- I wouldn't really say the high there was a dragon, just a corrupted spirit. Well, yeah, the, I put. I, I meant to put like quotes around dragon. Oh, okay. I don't well, know if it was conveyed well through my. Well, the, the thing you went to fight was the the pre panda. Yeah, the high day. Yeah. Okay. And you tried, dragon, sorry. The dragon was Ro- Roku spirit or Roku's yes. animal guide. Animal guide. Yeah. The dragon is basically Roku's Appa. I love Appa. That's one thing. Um, I cannot express my love for Appa efficiently in words. He just kept getting even better throughout these three episodes. I just can't. I know. I love Appa so much. He's yeah, the Appa's best great. character. <sighs> Appa, right. I'm an Appa stan. That's, a, that's the best kind of stan. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, on to Winter Solstice Part 2. Aang has decided to go to the Crescent Isle, um, which is in firebending territory, firebender territory. Um, he tries to drag Appa along without Sokka and Katara. Appa won't budge, because uh, he knows. He's smart. Of course he knows. Sokka and Katara decide they're coming with Aang. So they all go for uh, the Crescent Isles. Uh, Zuko shows up at the town after them and gets the info he needs to follow them. On their way to the Fire Nation, uh, Zuko tries to shoot them down from the back. And a blockade helmed by Commander Zhao tries to shoot them down from the front. Okay, I was surprised when he came back. Uh, You thought he was a one and done? I didn't think he was a one and done. I I just thought... That he was that was gonna take a little while for him to come back. No, you thought. <laughs> well, uh, they managed to break through the blockade. Sokka almost dies. A lot of fireballs. Appa's having a bad day, and Zuko's ship gets a little bit damaged. Uh, but Zhao lets him through, despite the fact that he he really should arrest him. Um, the Ang gang make it to the Crescent Isles. And Zuko loses, um, or thinks he loses Zhao under the cover of smoke. Uh, Turns out the temple is not abandoned, but has five fire sages in there. uh, Four of whom are not loyal to the Avatar, but one of them is a cool dude. Yeah, Sha... Sha Shayu. I think that was the name. (laughs) I think it was Shayu. He takes him up to the door where Aang can meet uh, Roku, but it's been sealed, and only five firebenders or a fully realized avatar can open it. Sokka tries out some firebombs to see if they can get through with that, uh, but it only looks like it works, which they use to their advantage to trick the fire sages into opening it for them. Aang almost doesn't get in because Zuko temporarily captured him. He gets away and gets inside. Before Zuko can really do anything, uh, Commander Zhao shows up, uh, ready to arrest pretty much everyone. Uh, Commander Zhao does not have time today. Mm-mm. Got places to be. He, he does. Anyway. He has, he has what was the... the avatar. What was that? Me? He's one of those... Yeah. Cat pleaser. Hello? Rather, no, not people pleaser, but like a. Mm. I keep phasing in and out because my internet's garbage. Well, I was just asking if you asked um, what I said or what Jared said. I'm confusion. I didn't hear what you said, Nora. <laughs> oh. I said. I mean, it wasn't that important. I just said he has um, more important things to do than the Avatar, even though, you know, like, the Avatar is, like... <laughs> kind of important. Yeah, but... Yeah. <laughs> he Not just me. really wants to kiss up to Ozai. Yeah. That was a joke. It's not as funny once I repeated it. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> 
anyway, um, Aang is in the big chamber, uh, and Avatar Roku talks to him, basically tells him that something called Sozin's Comet uh, will soon be arriving by the end of summer, and with the power boost they get from it, firebenders are going to end the war. And Aang needs to master all four elements by the end of summer if they have any chance of victory. Now, Sozen was the original Fire Lord 100 years ago, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, so Roku helps Aang uh, defeat the Fire Sages and Zhao forces. I uh, tumble down the temple. Everyone escapes on Appa, except the Fire Sages have been uh, all arrested. And Zuko got away. The Batmobile lost a wheel. He just, he just like, burned out of there. Boop, 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 boop. I'm starting to like Zuko. Yeah. They're, they're getting used to the angsty boy. Yeah. And I'm Garbage like, boy. Um, I don't know if I do as much anymore, but the first episode, I shipped Zuko and Sokka. I don't know. I just do. <laughs> okay. I don't know if it's going to happen. Probably won't. I Probably won't. I this is a Nickelodeon it. show from the mid-2000s. Uh, I, I guarantee it won't, but I bet <laughs> the creators were on the same level as me. They wanted it to happen. Wait, wait, wait. Zuko and Sokka? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. I just feel it. And Jared's I feel not it, like I know. Um, forget Aang and Katara. The real ship is Zuko and Sokka. All right, well, we will see how that works out for you. I know. You're welcome. You'll always have fan fiction. I don't know. I'll pass on that one. But um, I just, I have my own suspicion. And also, whenever Zuko turns into a teddy bear and turns to Aang, it turns to the Aang gang, which I'm still convinced is going to happen. I think we'll see their relationship blossom. Okay. Those are my predictions. <laughs> there were some, there were some good Zuko moments in this episode. I feel uh, just that I'm sorry, Uncle, before he decides to run the blockade. Just acknowledging that he's not a complete idiot. He realizes what he's doing is stupid. Yeah, it's always good to not be a complete idiot. Yeah, Zuko, Zuko needs more of that not idiot juice, though. I didn't think it was stupid for him to charge. What else was he going to do? Just be like, bye, take the avatar, and I'll just be dishonored forever. Like, he didn't really have a choice. I mean, technically no, but for you know, maybe opening up the iron device is not a bad thing. Yeah. Anyway, um... Shayu was a cool dude. He was. I really liked how he proved that not all the firebenders are bad. Some of them have a conscience. Yeah, yeah. and like oh. basic, you know, human morals. Wow, they're people too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's some cool aspects to the temple as well. Just the door that you can open with firebending. Yeah. Leads to the secret magma tunnels that Roku made. There, there is genuinely so much imagination and creativity put into the show. Yeah. And even in just moment-to-moment -moment gags, like when Sokka gets the idea and we pan up to the lantern, you get that light bulb thing. Yes. I thought that was hilarious. I also, I, I always love the little workaround, just the, the fact that, you know, Sokka makes up a, a pretty good on-the-spot plan and it doesn't work, but they're able to use that to their advantage anyway. The idea in my mind is that Sokka isn't necessarily very book smart. But he's very practically smart when he needs to be. That's a good way to put it, yeah. He, I... He's street smart, too. He, he's the probably the better communicator of the three. He is a good piece between Egg and Katara. Yeah. 
Aang and, Ta- Aang and Katara are both so, like, well-meaning. I like that he's a little more mischievous mm. and willing to lie sometimes. But Also, just in moments like the last episode, uh, how could yeah. we ever pay you? You could give us some supplies and yeah. some money. <laughs> but then in the last, the third episode we watched, Katara and Sokka kind of switch on the good bad there with the whole a little bit yeah yeah which I don't mind I like it when not to be bad yeah I didn't mind that at all in a little bit uh also what do you guys I really like about Katara is that she's not just you know she's girl and all she can do is girl stuff and not even, like, in terms of fighting, but, like, she has so much of a defined personality. Yeah, like, just the fact that she was the one who was able to console Aang, and he was able to use that to console the spirit. Yeah. Stuff like and that. And she like. has good moments and bad moments of her intentions, and I don't know, maybe I'm used to... Uh, in, in Kingdom Hearts, the, the three main protagonists, Sora, Riku, and Kairi, Sora and Riku are like the two, you know, big main characters of the franchise. Kairi is just girl. Is sexist female stereotype? Yes. Mm. Wow, it's mm. like the creators of this show realize that she's a person with emotions and feelings. Yeah. Now, there are several other female characters in the Kingdom Hearts franchise who are actually, you know, kind of like people and like have stuff going on about them and can do stuff but Kyrie is not one of them no is no. she like is she like princess peach yes she's always getting kidnapped or yeah wow that's annoying although the one time she actually fights she's incredibly powerful wow okay well, do that more yeah they should shouldn't they Anyway, I'm used to the, the trio dynamic of, you know, oh, the two guys, they're the big main characters, and they do all the cool stuff. Oh, Kyrie, go back to your, go back to your box. I would stop <laughs> watching the show. Like, if that was Katara, I'd be like, y'all. Yeah, no worries. Uh... <laughs> I'd be like, y'all, we have an issue. Katara. Yeah, I have no doubts that is, Katara. Is a rounded character, which is nice. Yeah. She doesn't Dare get I say, do- maybe my favorite character so far. Mm. I've already expressed and- my favorite character. <laughs> yes, Appa. <laughs> One thing that's great is particularly the voice acting. There's not been a voice performance that I didn't like. Oh, yeah. They're, they're all doing real good work right now. Yeah, yeah and I- the main three are all... And you could tell there they were kids when they recorded this. They're all fantastic. They they, I know. they never really miss a beat. No, they don't. Yeah, they are they are crushing it in that department. And yeah. Dante, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say it was ironic as it is, like to the first episode I said. Um, the off this, but Zuko's actually becoming one of my favorite voices. Yeah. It's. I really get it with his character now, cause I, yeah. I guess I just imagined him older, more superior, but he's not. He's trying to prove a point, so it makes sense. Yeah, that... he's sixteen. He's like, sixteen. Yeah, it's like an actual kid, like learning is voicing him. So yeah. I mean, and I like, like, I was sixteen once, and I was a total little tryhard, you know, trying to prove myself to the world and to myself. So I totally get his character. Yeah. Isn't Aang... How old is Aang? 12. That's Aang, what I thought. Well, technically 112, but, you know. How old is Katara and Sokka? Uh, they're around 13, 14, respectively. Oh. Aang. Yeah, Katara does look a little old. She's, she's taller than Aang. Aang got himself an older woman by one Hey, year. he's a short king. Wow. <laughs> well, um... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, to talk about somebody who's definitively not a king, um, 
We mentioned him earlier, uh, but Commander Zhao is back in this two-parter. He is. I didn't realize that he had already been in the series until y'all said something earlier, and then I realized it was the same guy from before, but I'm sorry. I did not realize that was the same person. I, it's okay. I thought, we're talking about the, the angry fire guy, right? The yeah, the one who's commander. calling him a traitor. Yeah, yeah, that guy didn't remember. Sorry, my bad. It's all good. But yeah, he's he's back. Uh, he's got more of his direct antagonism with Zuko. Um, Their rivalry is great. Yes, it's also great that he feels so threatened by a 16-year-old. That, yeah, that's what I was about to say. That's Isn't such he, like, a an grown anime man? thing. Like, fam, you, you, you're a commander in charge of several warships. A literal child is standing in your way. I guess it's because... He's the only other person trying to get the Avatar. Is this the episode where it's revealed that that Zuko was banished, or? Well, they they talked about his banishment before. Uh, okay. Was, uh, really, there, one of the 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 last two two episodes of these three, I, Iroh says something about you know, oh, you were banished, Zuko. Also, Iroh's <laughs> voice actor, uh, top awesome. of the line. He's great. I love him. And we, Zuko's banishment has come up, especially in the beginning episodes. But this is the one where, because like he he's always had his own men, he's had his own ship, he's had his own rhinos. But this is the one that really shows. Oh yeah, he's not welcome yeah. in the Fire Nation. He can hang out at their ports, he can talk to their commanders, but if he tries to go home, badness. <laughs> I'm going to assume we'll find out what caused this later. We will, yes. Yeah, I would like to know, like now. <laughs> well, give it a little time, but patience. <sighs> well, my my only other note for the two parter really is I kind of wish Katara had a bigger role because uh, she wasn't able to do too much without water. <laughs> Again, Nora's problem with the water I'm you. I'm telling you. <laughs> not like she wasn't present or anything. It's just a... Well, Sokka wasn't really present either till he got... True, he... but Sokka was like an object of jeopardy for half of the, you know, the first part. Whereas Katara was just kind of hanging in the village. True, true. But it, it's not a bad thing. Like it's not a flaw, especially since we get a Katara episode right after these. Yeah. Speaking of, do you guys want to jump in? Yeah, Sokka and Katara really switched this episode. Katara got mean. She almost made Aang cry. That that made me so upset. And yeah, I know. Whimper, is... like when she yelled at him, that was so sad. Yeah. So this is the waterbending scroll. Just a quick recap. Aang's freaking out uh, because of his new deadline. Katara's like, okay, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of my uh, waterbending. We'll, we'll get you started. Turns out, uh, you know, being, being the Avatar boy, he, he can take to it pretty quickly. Uh, she gets a little jealous. Later, they're searching for supplies in town uh, due to a waterbending mishap. Uh, and Katara steals a waterbending scroll from some pirates to try and learn a new move. Uh, she real bad at it, and that just makes her frustration even worse. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then the Zuko and the pirates team up, and it's a big old brawl to try and get them. Uh, but they manage to escape with teamwork and waterbending. Wow. Let it be said, this was my favorite episode of the, the ones I've seen so far. Really? Oh, I really love this one. I remember this one playing a lot when I was a kid, so I... I like knew all the beats pretty well, and uh, yeah, I still really like it. <laughs> I was thoroughly engaged. It was very character focused. I like it, but it's not my favorite, just because I I don't know why. I guess I feel like Katara sort of degressed, but she needs that to progress. So it was good. It just wasn't one of my favorites, but yeah, 
I think my favorite's still the Boomy episode. <laughs> well, fair. <laughs> so. <laughs> Got Best Boy in it, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, good to establish that Katara does have flaws. Mm-hmm. Not a perfect character. That's why I liked it. Because I said I... Katara is kind of my favorite character. It showed her having flaws and, like, insecurity and stuff. I guess that is true. Because she takes such pride in, like, her waterbending. She's so excited to be able to share it with Aang. Yeah. It's like, it took me two months just to learn how to do this. Because, you know, she's the only waterbender in her tribe. Nobody could teach her. And Aang's just like, oh, look, doing it. I'm doing the dance. And she gets gets a little ticked. And they're... They are so powerful together. Like with the whole, I have a great teacher type of thing. Yeah, that was sweet. I like that. Aww. It's just, it, even though she knows he means no harm, it, it still frustrates her deep down. I don't blame her. Yeah. No, it was a good episode. Their really whole fun. dynamic is just really cute. I like it. Oh, yeah. And I guess I, I know now that the, the ship becomes canon. Even if I didn't, I, I would probably still be shipping it. Outside of it, you know, being, oh, it's the main guy and the main girl. Of course, they have to get together. But, like, yeah. you, there's Super. reasons for them to like each other. Yeah, it's just so in your face, though. <laughs> I it's mean, like... again, kid show. Oh, oh, and one thing I really love. The fact that Sokka is Katara's brother means we don't have to have a forced love triangle. Those, Hooray! Those do get I, old sometimes. I hate love triangles <laughs> in real life and in... Uh, Least favorite shape. Yeah. Too dang pointy. Anyway. Is it, is it really your least favorite shape, Daniel? Too dang pointy. Anyway. It's too pointy. <laughs> You'll poke your eye out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, a lot of good comedy in this episode too. Uh, Cabbage Man's back. The Cabbage Man's yes. back, yeah. Yes. What is it with this showing cabbages? So, uh, it, it won't hurt to tell you now, uh, but Cabbage Man is a running gag. Awesome. Excellent. That's that's Excellent. very exciting. I did I didn't want to spoil it after the Boomy episode, uh, but he back. I approve. It just I really destroy do. his whole cart. This I, poor I, man and his 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 uh his living. I hope in the big final battle I hope in the big final battle that's bound to happen, he like throws Aang a cabbage and Aang uses it as like part of the final defeat of the um Fire Lord. <laughs> Locking in that prediction? Yeah, that's what I want to happen. Yeah, All right. that's- that's my third prediction. <laughs> Cabbage Man is secretly the most powerful character in the show. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Yes. Add that to the third prediction. Good work, Jaren. Didn't think about that. But yes. He's a cabbage bender. The, the Cabbage no. Man is the second avatar. You didn't know there were two, did you? Well, that's the plot twist. Yes. Plot twist. Yeah. Last yeah, that was, episode, that was I twist. said the oh. show is good, and then I clarified because I was afraid. Um, I was afraid I was getting too ahead of myself. Perhaps I would still be now if I said the show is good, but I will say I very much enjoy the show so far. Nah, I already knew I was going to like playing it. Playing his cards close to his vest. I don't like getting ahead of myself, and I don't like uh, being wrong. You've been burned. It's okay. I've been burned. It's fair. That's fair. You know, I knew I was going to like it before I watched it. So it's a good show and I can say it. Hooray. <laughs> also, the pirates were really fun this episode. The pirates are great. Honestly, the side characters have all been on point. Oh, what are curious? You know, I'm not entirely sure, but we got them. And I like the dynamic between Zuko and the Firebenders with the pirates. Oh, yeah, that was pretty good. And just the the finagling of, you know, all that. 
he threatens their thing, and then Sokka's just like, oh, no, he's the Avatar. You can get so much money for him. I I didn't really think Katara showed as much in this episode, even though it is her episode. I thought Sokka did, to be honest. Sokka really impressed me this episode. There were good Sokka moments. I love the it's just resignation to clean Appa's toes. Yeah, but really, he was kind of like, I thought he was kind of the hero of this episode, to be honest. Yeah. He told Katara what she was wrong. He, like, called her out on it. He got them out of the situation, despite him not having any bending powers. Like, this was my favorite episode of Sokka. Absolutely. And that's why I, I said earlier that he's growing on me, yeah. And also, uh, Aang learning water bending, which... Yeah, he's on his makes way. It, well, makes it a really good... Just, uh, he's yeah. got less than a year to defeat... Fire Lord Ozai. Yeah, but he learned that so fast, so... Well, fair is fair. He he already does know how bending works as an airbender himself. And he yeah, is but... the avatar, so he's kind of attuned to this thing. It shouldn't take him the whole summer, then. That took a day to learn water bending, ping kapong. <sighs> Oh, sure, he knows how to do a few moves. He hasn't mastered it. <laughs> yeah, That's remember, he has to master them all. That's fair. Gotta catch them all, Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> the crossover we all need. That was good, and you know it. <laughs> no, I, I genuinely I, I, laughed, I, actually. I, I thought that was... Like a Snorlax sounds like a great, great just mini-episode. Appa, go! <laughs> uh, this is fun. I, I'm enjoying this show. I want to see Appa fight Momo. Not in the show, but just like out of context. Just, just make an avatar fighting game and you just have uh, Appa versus All Appa would have to do is just sit on him. That was exactly what I was going to say. Him. I want to see Momo do like... Or eat him, yeah. Yeah, I want to see Momo do like carp wheels and all these ninja trips. And then Appa just walks over and sits on him, and it's like match over. I would pay money to watch that. That'd be great. It would. Yeah. So, hmm. trying to trying to think of more things about this episode. I mean, there was a lot. We did cover a good chunk of it. I feel yeah. satisfied. Oh, there were you there satisfied was... with your care. <laughs> There was one, there's one Zuko moment that I did want to touch on. Just the whole, uh, when Katara is like trying to get away from the pirates and he's just there. He's like, I'll save you from the pirates. Like, damn, that was a creepy line to cut the commercial on. Yeah. I really hope people don't ship Katara and Zuko. Oh, um, mm. I have a story for you, Jaren. Oh no. Wait. I'll save it until the end of the podcast because that's when it'll be most relevant. Okay. Wait, I kind of shipped that. I thought you shipped Zuko and Sokka. I have multiple ships, Daniel. Hmm. But that makes a love triangle. <gasps> the worst Sokka. shape. Yeah, Sokka the two and... siblings uh, and, and no. Zuko. Wait, there is a love triangle. Y'all just don't see it. Sokka and Aang. Yeah, that's it. That's the love triangle. There you go. Walking in that ship. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, here's my ships. Sokka and Aang. Sokka and Zuko. Um, Zuko and Katara. And Appa and that panda. <laughs> Appa and what? <laughs> Appa and the high bay. <laughs> the big panda. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I think that's my best ship so far. It is. Thank you. I just kind of want to ship anyone that isn't Aang and Katara for the sake of it not being Aang. You're shipping Katara. everything that's not nailed down. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, oh. Oh. I, sh oh. <laughs> I ship the Fire Lord and Aang. <laughs> No. No. <laughs> no. The Fire Lord is a grown ass man. Aang is 12. <laughs> we don't do that. We don't do that. Please okay, don't do fine. that. 
Never mind. I didn't know. I haven't seen him yet. I mean, he's Zuko's he's father, six... and Zuko is like oh, 16, man. so... I mean, I knew, but that's going to be my excuse when people <laughs> accuse <Okay. laughs> me. <laughs> what was that? That was me. That was Daniel laughing at my hilarious commentary. Oh, shoot. I just got something. Okay. And I did just want to get one last thing in Edgewise. Bit of an important plot point, but Zuko <laughs> using uh, the necklace as leverage. Trying to yeah, get that was that was dirty. That was that was yeah. He's a he's a stink boy. Yeah, but I don't think Katara would give up Aang for a necklace. Well, no, like, she did. But it it's a good little reminder that he does have the necklace. Yeah. Yeah. The the reason why I said I hope people don't ship them is that I was already getting big Raylo vibes. <laughs> and I just, I can't do this again. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't want to do this again. I can't. I'm not a Star Wars fan. Zuko and Katara. <laughs> oh, boy. It's the shipping episode. Yeah. Gotta ship them all. Avatar. Well... That pretty much concludes these three episodes. I'm glad we did them like this, because the waterbending scroll does work as a little calm down episode after the two parter. Yeah. Get to get to address the whole deadline now. Get some progress there. The fact that there's a deadline actually kind of makes I don't know, it gives it more urgency and like more reason for the adventure. Oh yeah. Because now it's not just, uh, you have to do this eventually. Now it's, you have to do this in less than a year, in a time frame that nobody's been able to do before. And if you don't, everyone dies. You have to master the elements, defeat the big bad, stop the comet. No pressure. It's Nickelodeon. He'll be fine. <laughs> it's Nick. I do get the feeling there will be like a major character death at one point. Well, probably, but we'll get to that when we get to that. I'm not saying one of the, the, the main trio, but like a I big character. I want to join if Appa dies. I'm and I've been spoiled on one thing. It has nothing to do with that. So, And Daniel knows a thing I've been spoiled on. Yes, I do. You Aside from... So sadly. Twitter, <laughs> Daniel said that with such great depression in his voice. How big was the spoiler? Uh, it, it wasn't bad, but it's... I, I wish spoilers were not a thing. I wish people wouldn't just talk about just it. People in my Facebook feed spoiling a 15-year-old show. Yeah, with, with jokes. <laughs> with jokes, with memes. Mm. Well... Anytime I see something Avatar related in my Facebook or Twitter feeds, quickly scroll past. Well, hopefully I'll remain unspoiled, so. Yeah, you don't have Facebook or Twitter. I don't. Nora's living in the spoilers free zone. She's living in the best timeline. (laughs) That's not true. My phone will probably hear me and something will probably pop up on like a YouTube ad or TikTok or the episode where Aang dies. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I'm not gonna lie. If Aang dies at the end, and, like, they revive him, or he becomes, like, the next form of Avatar, I- I'm I'm ready for that. Well, I mean, the Avatar does reincarnate, so... Yeah, I know. That's why I'm thinking. Like, I've thought, I've thought this out. If Aang dies, I won't be shocked, because he gets reincarnated. So if that's what happens... Yeah, but it'll take uh, a couple years before his reincarnation would be ready to do anything. Eh, he'll be fine. Anyway, does that finish the episode? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, I think I've said about everything I want to say. Momo fought a reptilian bird and came out on top. Good man. sure did. So we've got the next crop of episodes waiting for you guys. Uh, and just looking at the three of them, it's an interesting bunch. Okay. Say no Uh, more. I'll understand when I get there. Yeah. 
Uh, oh my gosh, I'll is the cactus why... episode here? I'm not going to confirm or deny. Oh! Like, you know I'm not going to confirm or deny, Nora. Yeah. Catherine, come on the podcast. You're my favorite person in this world. Please do it. Please do it, Catherine. Yeah. Nora, you've met Catherine. Yeah, she's dope. Uh, I'll tell you why they're an interesting bunch on uh, the next episode of the podcast, but you, you'll be able to tell a little bit of it just from watching them. So. Yeah. But yeah, you guys uh, listening can join us next time. And Nora, if you'd like to sing us out. Yes. <laughs> okay, we ready? Yeah. All right. Avatar, gotta bend them all. <laughs> Avatar, <laughs> I'm an airbender in a world I must defend. Avatar, gotta bend them all. Aang, gang, 